last day of Focus VBS. Can you believe it? I've had so much fun this whole week seeing how we can take a closer look and grow in our relationship with God. All right, let's take a look at an unscrambling game. Uh, it's a, sort of our last game for the week, okay? So here we go. We can focus on what we can see by looking at amazing, the amazing world and the amazing people God has created. We can hear from God by reading the Bible. Very good. We can talk to others about what we believe. Very, very good. We can, yes, pray anytime, anywhere, about anything. That's awesome. We can do these things to focus on God and discover more about Him. And the best part is when we choose to do them every single day. It doesn't just have to be what we're here at VBS. You know, we can do it every single day. We can make a habit of living differently and focusing on God no matter what's going on around us, okay? Today, we'll talk more about awesome way that we can focus on God. That's all about the way we act every single day. Now, all of you jump up on your feet because it is time for us to put our focus on God and worship and dance with him. Here we go. You are above every other. Your love amazes me. You created Every beautiful color for everyone to see. I want the world to know. I want my life to show just what your love has done for me.
and that was awesome and good singing and it was a lot of fun and let's keep our focus on God let's keep it up That's right. Our God is so amazing. I love to worship him with you. You can have a seat now because we are going to take a closer look. Here I come. Hey guys, it's me, Kyle. I didn't know if you'd recognize me without the lights on and with the flashlight, but today we are playing flashlight tag in the lab, which means I might have to... Kyle! Oh, uh, be right back. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> Hi, guys. Have any of you seen Kyle? I'm trying to catch him. You're never gonna catch me! I heard you! I heard you! Oh, wrong way. Oh. Thanks for that. Man, it is crazy back there. Everything is so dark. You can't see anything. It's like, it's like a maze in the lab. Uh, I mean, you're, you're tripping over things. You're running oh, things. Oh. Ah. I'm fine. I better, uh, yeah, I better go check on her. Sorry about that. Um, okay, where was I? I was uh, talking about lights, flashlight tag. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, Wilson, Wilson just got me. I'm the king. <laughs> okay, uh, king. Hey, do you do you mind uh, putting the spotlight on me real quick? Okay, yeah. Perfect. Light illuminates everything that we see, and even some things that we can't. So today, on a closer look, we're talking about just that. Stay tuned. Ah! Samantha. Samantha. When we think about light, we usually think about lamps or the sun, but there's so many different ways to use light, like, uh... No spoilers, please. Kyle, I am your friend. <laughs> <laughs> light isn't just something out of bulbs or from the sun. Light is also lasers. Oh. <laughs> but what good do lasers even do? Well, they look cool. But looking cool isn't a reason to be talking about it on this show. I mean, this is science that we're dealing with here, people. What's the practical application? First, uh, the fact that you care about the content of this show means the world to me, so thank you. And second, lasers can be used in so many different ways. It can help uh, shape people's eyes so they can see better. Oh, like a uh, LASIK. Yeah, you know, my dad had that done before we couldn't even read a stop sign, but now we can read the newspaper over my mom's shoulder when they're in separate rooms. Wow, exactly. <laughs> and there's also LIDAR. Ooh! What's that? Well, it's basically a radar that uses lasers. So we use light to scan entire areas to take an incredibly detailed photograph that we normally couldn't see with the naked eye. Uh, check it out. <gasps> Look, an entire ancient city covered by trees for hundreds of years, and we discovered it using LIDAR. See, the city couldn't be seen because the trees had covered it up, but we found it with light using LIDAR. Plus, they sound super cool. Yeah, they do. <laughs> also, because high-powered lasers are accurate over long distances, we can measure things like elevation very, very... Houston, we have a problem. Very accurately. <laughs> But that's some of the small picture stuff about light. But what about the big picture stuff, like about supporting life on our planet? Well, we're gonna talk about all of that right after this. I will, yeah, yeah. Today, we're going to look at the most important instructions that Jesus gave us. Pay attention. Hmm, well, hello there. Who are you looking at? You looking at me? Huh? You looking at me? Are we rolling? Oh, <clears throat> hello, I'm Kellen, and we've been having a lot of fun taking a closer look at the world around us. So I have a mirror here, but it's not just any mirror. It's a two-way mirror. The way it works is that one person can see through it from the side where it's darker, and the person on the other side sees a reflection of themselves when the light is on them. So here's me, but when I stand behind it, and change the lighting. Can you see me now? Cool, right? I'm seeing a reflection of myself, but if we change the lights again, I see you. <laughs> cool, right? All right, well, we'll come back to that later. 
So our story today actually comes from two different books of the Bible. Now, they're both pretty famous passages. The first is from the book of Matthew, where the Pharisees are asking a question of Jesus. First, let me explain who the Pharisees were. They were a group of religious leaders who tried to honor God by following a bunch of religious rules. The problem was they focused so much on following the rules that they didn't love God or other people very well. They also didn't like how Jesus claimed to be the Son of God, and they didn't like how everyone seemed to be following after him. When one of the Pharisees asked his question, he was really trying to put Jesus to the test and see if Jesus might say something that would get him in trouble. So he asked Jesus this question, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Now the law he was referring to was the law in the Old Testament that had lots of rules. Lots of rules for all kinds of things like what kind of work you could do on certain days of the week or making sure you covered your water wells or to not eat owls. Seriously, it's in there, check it out. So Jesus answers them and says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything that is written in the law and the prophets is based on these two commandments. Jesus basically sums up the law with those four verses. There are more than 600 rules in the Old Testament, and Jesus says here what you need to do. Love God, love people. That's it. Crazy, right? But how do we love someone? I mean, what is love? The Apostle Paul had some things to say about love in the book of 1 Corinthians. Paul said, love is patient, love is kind. Love does not dishonor others. He also says that love does not look out for its own interests. Love is full of joy. It always protects, it never gives up. Love never fails. Now, that's a lot of beautiful words about love, but what does it look like in our everyday life? What does it look like for love to be patient? Okay, what if your little brother or sister has destroyed the Lego tower you built for the third or fourth time. Showing them love might mean that you're patient and that you don't get angry at them. What does it look like for love to be kind? Well, maybe there's a new kid at school or at camp, and maybe they don't look or sound like you or any of your friends. It may not be easy, but to show that person love means to show kindness. Invite them to sit with you at lunch or play with you at recess, even if your other friends don't want to. What does it look like for love to never fail? That's a big one, right? To say that love never fails? Well, I don't think Paul was saying that love is always easy. It's not. And sometimes we might feel that love has failed when you try to show someone kindness or patience and they make fun of you or they ignore you. But I think maybe Paul is saying that we can't give up. And if we continue to show people love, it will change them and change us, even if we can't see it immediately. I think it's also good to remember that God is described as love. And what God did by sending us his son Jesus will never fail. Even when we mess up, God still loves us. And we can show that same love to others. Here. Let me show you something. So we're back at this two-way mirror. Remember that it works because of light. When you light up one side of the mirror and lower the light on the other side, the person that has the light shining on them is able to be seen. So when I shine the light on myself, I can look in the mirror and see myself. Hey, Kellen. But when we turn the light down on ourselves and we turn the light up on the other side of the mirror, we turn the light on others. We turn the focus on other people and we can see who they are and what they need. When we take a closer look at others, we're able to see them as God sees them and live for God by loving them. Pretty incredible, right? So as you go home and as you meet new friends in the next few weeks, remember that you can live for God by showing others God's love. And keep a lookout because there are so many things to learn about God when you take a closer look. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, let's check back in with our friends over there at a closer look. 
Do you ever wonder how we got this amazing world around us? It's all because of four little words. Let there be. Oh, I know this one. Oh, light. <laughs> light is the main source for life on our planet. Light is the sole source for food creation on our planet. For instance, we need light to grow our fruits and our vegetables. But have you ever wondered why? It's all because of a little process known as photosynthesis. Here's how it works. The sun shines on us, and the plants use that energy to turn carbon dioxide, which we cannot breathe, into oxygen. And oxygen is what we breathe. So next time you take a deep breath, think a plant. Because plants are pretty important. Thanks, plants. We need light to see, yes, but light comes in a spectrum that makes our world beautiful. For instance, if we didn't have this various spectra of light, our world might look like. I don't like it. Oh man, I got Neapolitan. How am I gonna know which one's the chocolate? But because we do have different kinds of light, our world looks like. Hmm. Figured it out. <laughs> From clean solar energy to maintaining the Earth's temperature to letting us know when to go to sleep at night, light plays a huge role in our everyday life. Everything we do here at A Closer Look requires light. After all, we need light to take a closer look. Oh. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Did you uh, leave in any ice cream for me? Ah, uh, we left you a little strawberry. <laughs> a plant that gets the right amount of sunlight will thrive and grow. <laughs> I am so full of sun energy, I could not be more psyched. <laughs> but if the plant doesn't get the right amount of light, what? People can be the same way. Sometimes when a light isn't shining on someone, we can't see the details of them in their life. That's why we gotta do everything we can to light others up, shining a light on others and showing them love. Well, uh, hey, Wilson, can, can you fix that spotlight, please? Got it. When I shine a light on Samantha, I can see how enthusiastic she is. And I can also see that she likes it when others are just as enthusiastic as her. <laughs> I know that she gets excited about even my craziest idea. <laughs> Way to bring the fun, Samantha. Oh, hey, thanks, Kyle. <laughs> and when I shine a light on Wilson, I can see how smart he is and how he makes all of us smarter. It's true. <laughs> and I won't let his grumpiness get in the way of telling me so. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing to shine a light on your friends? How are you seeing them better? Well, guys, that's it for this week. Thank you for joining us and for taking a, a closer, closer look. look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to. I wanna... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, high five again. Ready? High five! You're doing it! Charlie! I did not secure that, guys. I am so sorry. Cool. Hey, let's focus on God and sing together. Stand up with me. Sing loud. Let me hear you sing. And here we go.
I don't know about you, but I want to live for God. I want to put my focus on Him. And let me show you. Let life show your life show others how good He is. I want to show love to people He has put all around me. After all, Jesus said that's the most important thing we can do. Okay, he, here's the really great news. Here's the really great news. That's something we can do every single day. Every day, we can find ways to be patient and kind. We can look for chances to show the kind of love that God shows us, the kind of love that never, ever fails. It can be pretty simple when you're on the lookout. Just stop and think to yourself, what would I want someone to do for me? And then go out and do it, okay? Treat others the way you want to be treated. Think of others instead of just yourself. Put your focus on what God has done for you and live your life differently because of it. You can live for God by loving others. Say that again. You can live for God by loving others. Here's something that you can think about and talk about. How do you focus on others? I bet you've got some great ideas to share and you learn from some different things from each other. Remember, if we're not careful, we start to focus on things that we want and that we need. But real love means we put the focus on other people. Today, before we go, right, I want you to hear, uh, I want to hear you say our memory verse, nice and loud. Are you ready? Our memory verse, nice and loud. I hope you have it memorized. Hebrews 12, 2, go. Excellent. Y'all did an excellent job. Now, let's take one last uh, attempt. Let's go play our crafts and our activities one more time. Hey guys, welcome to our final day of craft overview. I have had so much fun, and to help us remember this year at VBS, we are making picture frames. Some of y'all are going to be decorating your own picture frame, and others are going to be making it with a rock and some wire. Don't forget, we do have those detailed instruction videos in our day five. Guys. And here's our missions video. I'll see you in that. Hey, welcome to day five. It's our last day together doing missions for this year's VBS. And today on this last day, I want to ask a couple important questions. First question, raise your hand. Who collected some quarters this week out there? Good, good. Hey, Raise your hand if you collected any food items. That is so exciting. And this Sunday, you can bring your quarters or your canned goods up here to church. If you bring your tube back, uh, we're going to trade it for another tube, but that tube will be filled with M&Ms in it. So that way you get a little treat for bringing in your first tube of quarters and then you get to eat the M&Ms, clean it out, and then when you collect another tube of quarters and you bring it back, there's a tube of M&Ms, uh, you can see how that's going to keep going. I'm excited to see all that work. All right, so today we heard which commandment Jesus said was the most important to follow. Who remembers what it was? Yes, the greatest commandment is to love God. The second greatest commandment is to? Yes, love your neighbors. Our bottom line that we're studying today is you can live for God by loving others. Okay, this week we have gathered and donated so many meals. Where is this food going now? Right, this food is going to be distributed right here in our community and all around the world. Distributed means it's the action of sharing something out among a number of people or recipients, right? Uh, you know, so people can receive things. Uh, who can think of things we can distribute or share with other people?
Yes, that's a great job. And in order to distribute this food, it takes lots of people who volunteer or work full time for organizations that distribute the food. So there are people who work at Feed My Starving Children and at the Amazing Grace Food Pantry, plus all the people who volunteer for these organizations. We want to thank them. And we want to love them by making them some cards, okay? Uh, cards to express our thanks for all of their hard work. So let's make some cards real quick. And here's what you're going to do. You're either going to have a card or you're going to take a blank piece of paper. On there, you're going to write a note or you're going to draw some kind of pictures on those cards or paper. And then when you bring up your last bit of food or your rolls of quarters up here to church, you're going to drop off your note. You can write more than one. Or your notes, you're going to drop them off up here as well. Okay? So now I have a couple videos for you to watch today. And during the second one, I want you to get up and I want you to dance, right? And so there's going to be a couple videos. Make sure you're getting out of your chair and make sure you're having fun. Check these out. Thank you so much. Thank you for your good health and thank you for your good health and may the Lord be with you. Thank, thank you. you. We are very grateful to those who have shared their resources, their efforts. We are praying that God would shower you more blessings so that your generosity will extend to other communities like us and be a blessing to other people. We pray. Thank you, volunteers, for helping feed my starving children reach so many kids around the world. By packing meals and donating funds, you have enabled kids to eat, learn, laugh, play, and dance. these children as they pursue hope and a better future. Oh, hey, you caught me and now we're back. Okay, so this week has been amazing. Okay, remember, we have to focus on what you can see. We have to hear from God. You have to talk to others about what you believe. You can pray, pray anytime, anywhere, about anything. And that bottom line that we need to understand today is that you can live for God by loving others. Okay, let's pray. Dear Father, I thank you for this week. I thank you for the hearts of these children. I thank you for their motivation, uh, giving them the ability to set goals, for so many of them to just blow right past what they thought they could do, for the strength you have given them to, to find quarters, to ask for people to donate quarters, to explain how the organizations like Feed My Starving Children can thrive so much on just quarters. And then for the food they collected, Father, we thank you for their ability to, to see what food they personally can donate. And maybe they have signs out and their neighbors are giving them food to bring to the church as well. The stuff that we are able to see children accomplish this week in your name. And you know, we want to thank you for the love that you have shown us because it's through that kind of love for others that we want to help them. It's through that kind of love that we donate our time and that kind of love, we donate money and find ways to help and volunteer so we can help feed all the people right here 
that are around us and around the world that could really use a meal today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good job this week with VBS. Excellent job with missions. Thanks for getting us wet this week too on drop-off day. We'll see you guys later. Awesome. This has been an incredible week. I want to pray together with you for the VBS we've had. And uh, I just hope that you continue to grow in God's love. God, we come to you today and we humble ourselves in front of you. We ask you to continue showing us how much you love us and overfill our hearts with love so that we can take that abundance and go and continue to spread the love that you want us to show others. Continue guiding us through your word. Continue speaking us through your prayers. Father, I pray for those this week that have made the decision to accept your Son, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior, to join us in our brotherhood and our sisterhood and live that eternal life that they can only get by believing in your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, I know this has been an amazing week at VBS, and I know you have moved hearts. I know you have changed hearts. I know we have new brothers and sisters that are going to join us in your glorious heaven forever and ever. And we pray all of this in your son's Jesus' name. Amen. All right, that was a fun VBS, but it doesn't have to be over. If you don't have a home church, We'd love for you to come join us here at Gateway Community Church. You guys have an awesome rest of your summer, and I'm going to miss you. Take care.